Hi, hello, greetings, welcome to another video. I wasn't sure about uploading this one now, but I've done it anyway, just because it's got a very Japanese-y theme, and the last video that I uploaded to this channel was my Japanese-themed Animal Crossing island tour video, and I thought, oh no, uh, you, I, I, oh no, you're gonna think I'm a weeb. Truth is, I am one. Um, there's no escaping it. But oh well, moving on. I wanted to sort of hit a lot of things in this little video. I'm going to try and get through my thoughts as quickly as possible whilst also manage managing to hit every point. Um, it's going to be a tough one. We're going to go on a journey, I think. Um, I, hopefully, I'm going to end up just talking about this little drawing. I mean, so basically, this one's just like a little study. I went to Japan in 2014, and it was great, and it was amazing. Best things I've ever done. Um, and one place that I went to was Nikko, the forest of Nikko, in Nikko. It's basically a series of shrines and temples in this very beautiful um, rural forest area. I think it's like a nature preserve now. Um, but it's, it's, what's cool about it is, is that it's quite close to like a little street. So there's, you just cross this bridge and then you're on this main road, but there's like a whole big forest on the other side. Very Studio Ghibli-esque. Anyway, I took a photo of the very traditional looking bridge that was there. Um, just because it looked really cool. Here's my photo. This is my reference. So then, separate to that, I wanted to do a Hiroshi Yoshida inspired drawing. Like the idea of this drawing was that I was gonna try maybe to kind of make it look like a woodblock print, kind of. I don't really think I actually did end up making something that looks like a Hiroshi Yoshida piece of art. But it looks all right. It looks different. Like, um, you know, I start out with a, just a normal pencil line drawing. That's what I started with, you know. I block some of it in. And then I just try loads of different, like, techniques that I don't normally do. Like, I used the gradient tool quite a bit. And that led to some quite, like, 3D realistic lighting, in a sense. I went over some of the outlines with just, like, a thicker brush. Because I noticed in a lot of the woodblock stuff, there's some pretty blocky lines like there's not actually that much super fine detail obviously because it's like a print it doesn't look like a woodblock print but it was the best i could do I, I definitely struggled with the water i was trying to get the water texture right didn't really work for most of it at the end i found a cool brush that kind of like dragged some lines across so it looks okay anyway the cool bit about it was like, I was looking for reference, like Hiroshi Yoshida reference. I was like looking at some of his prints. And then I realized, had he done a print of this bridge? And I found some reference of this exact bridge that I walked across and took a photo of. And he had done a print of it. So I was like looking at photo reference whilst also looking at art reference of the same bridge. It was pretty cool. I'm going to talk about him more maybe I don't know we'll swing back around to him because I just wanted to maybe make, make this video turn this video into a little like let's learn some more about him his art is some of my favorite like traditional art ever um I think he's just a master so anyway there's a lot of things going on there's a lot of thoughts that I want to sort of connect and talk about one thing is um, I've just been like thinking back on some of my past videos that I've recently done, you know, what with the like the Black Lives Matter movement um, going on, what with protests going on, what with all this art shit and the Me Too movement and, and seeing seeing like social media like going a bit crazy um, and all these stories happening. But it just got me thinking that, you know, like, that's just what happens when you exist on social media, you know? As much as we like to complain about it, the fact of the matter is we're all just here and we all have social media. So uh, as much as it is a good thing to step away and sort of enjoy the real, the quote-unquote real world, at the same time, it's like, this is just a conversation happening. You're allowed to join in. You can choose to speak up or not speak up like sometimes the right thing to do is to shut up and say nothing and other times you know you've got to sort of use use whatever means that you have to convey your like 
personal take or whatever. As I've said before many a time, um, the internet does not need another straight white male take, hot take on anything. Um, so I just kind of wanted to comment on like, uh, ContraPoints did a video a while back about cringe and I feel like you can't help sometimes but cringe at yourself and, and I feel like one struggle, personal struggle that I've noticed in myself but also one that I've been quite open with from the get-go with you is that I am, although I'm sort of switching on, as I said, many, 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 many times before, I'm sort of doing a stream of consciousness uh, s speaking to you um, and that is like a sort of uh, 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 aspect that is not my usual self in a sense I'm still trying to be completely earnest with you and honest so sometimes what that then leads to is you know sort of awkward videos like I feel like me trying to earnestly talk about like the black experience in America or Britain or the world just is gonna be awkward for me and it's gonna be hard because I'm just a white dude. So I've just, I just, I don't know, I just sort of wanted to say that like, if you want to be earnest um, about stuff, and I think that's important, you just got to accept that sometimes things are gonna be cringe, you know? Like, you're gonna say, you're gonna stutter, you're gonna be slow. And this is not coming from anywhere. I've just been, like, no one's commented saying, oh God, cringe, man. You fucking talking about your ideals. That's just what I've been thinking about. Like, as much as I think it was important for me to sort of just show my solidarity, I just also have to say, you know, the fact is, it's awkward. The fact is, speaking, speaking your thoughts, can sometimes be cringe because you can just come out with stuff that just sounds dumb and you just sound like a big dummy. But that's fine and like that's part of it. I do, I'm, I'm not really sure where I was going with this but I feel like that cringe aspect is rooted in fear and like embarrassment. People don't like doing what I'm doing. Like, you know, obviously I want to do YouTube, I want to make videos, I want to make art videos and I also think that this sort of vlogging style works for me. There's a general sense online. This is like, again, this isn't a new take in any way, but I feel like there is a general sense in that the only accepted form of truth telling and the only accepted form of like sharing your opinion is through comedy. It's like the only people that we listen to are people who are making jokes. The only sort of takes that we listen to are through the lens of like sarcastic jokes and the moment that someone like says something sort of like genuine and earnest and like pure and like someone just being like oh hey i i think this is beautiful um people just are like <laughs> want to laugh and want to like shut down and they're like oh that's cringe all i mean to say by that is that I think cringing at stuff is a natural human human like response to difficult questions and ideas but at the same time we need to sort of push back slightly from the culture of like jokey jokey laughy laughy sarcasm is the only way we can deal with stuff online <laughs> even though even though that is a completely valid thing like I do that all the time like that is a that is also a valid way of dealing with your own shit but I think that online has made it into something else that's a bit more sinister like a bit more like you're not allowed to talk about earnest shit you know Moving swiftly on, um, I feel like I talked enough about that over the past few videos um, and I still stand by everything that I say in my videos most of the time. I guess the, the next stepping stone, the next point to link this to uh, with stuff that I've been thinking about, huge, huge fucking debates and like everyone seems to be talking about on Twitter. Stuff to do with um, like money and pay and, and commissions of artists, follow account, or, like how many followers you have on social media and loads of stuff. And I feel like there was this, there was this dodgy thing that happened where all these different topics kind of got merged together and it created a lot of conflict between like artists. And the main thing that I sort of took away from it was that 
obviously follow account doesn't mean shit. We really do like it's almost it goes without saying that like followers, Twitter followers, Instagram followers, YouTube subscribers doesn't mean anything. Like it doesn't mean your art your art's bad if you don't have any followers. It doesn't mean your art's amazing if you've got loads. Like that's that that's the base standard in my opinion. But it got skewed a bit in one direction. And I've talked about this yet again, talked about it before. You can check out my, like, Ethan Becker video where I was just talking about luck uh, and the role that luck plays in, in people's careers. I saw one take getting a bit skewed. And unfortunately, although I've talked about it before, I'm going to talk about it again. Um, and it was just, like, this idea that there was a lot of professional artists out there just not realising the problematic nature of just saying... Maybe you're not getting commissions because you're not good enough yet. Or, like, the idea of just, like, you've got to impress... Like, I don't know why it's problematic to say you've got to improve your skills. Like, what I want to say to that is that although that that sentiment is, 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 is understandable, and on one hand, that makes sense, like, obviously, you've got to improve your skills to get good enough to do stuff, Sure, how it comes across for a professional artist at a certain level, speaking down to thousands of artists out there, struggling artists, who are desperately working hard and doing their best to improve, and telling them that the reason why they're not successful is because they're not working hard enough. And I get, and I get where it comes from, because you, then you would say, oh, that's not what they're saying. They're not, they're not talking to the people who are working hard. No, they're talking to the people who are apparently... There's always going to be bitter people out there who tell pros that they only got there because they're lucky. But I feel like it's on the pros to kind of check their ego a bit and realise their back is up a bit because I feel like they're getting a bit defensive at the idea that someone might say that there was a bit of luck involved in their career. Because I think there's luck involved in everyone's career, even mine. And I am not earning a full-time full -time pay from my art yet. Of course there's luck and privilege, even in my tiny little channel, you know? There are people that just don't even have time to make YouTube videos, you know? That aspect got a bit muddied, and, and I feel like there are a lot of pros out there who can't recognize what they're saying is understandable of course you've got to improve your skills yeah there is a sea of artists out there who are very skilled who are trying their best desperately but are still not getting commissions they're still not getting callbacks they're still not getting their stuff seen by the right people because the right people are looking at one other person you know how many people are out there trying to make art their full-time career? It's just, I think it's just a bit short-sighted for people to say that, you know, all it takes is hard work, and if you're not a success, then you're not putting in enough effort. And I'll say this, even if I was a huge, massive success, like a global art success, right? I'd be the first one to shout loudly how lucky I would be and I got to get where I was going rather than just telling everyone that they've got to just work harder. It comes across in a similar way as, like, you know, imagine if, like, Coca-Cola told someone who wanted to make a fizzy drink that they've just got to work harder. <laughs> like, no, Coca-Cola have the fucking global market reach. That's it. There is no other company that's going to be as big as Coca-Cola because Coca-Cola exists. Do you know what I mean? Like, the art industry is super competitive, yeah? But the fact is, like, not everyone's gonna get an equal chance. And it's shit, so you have to, on all levels, no matter where you are on the scale, no matter if you're a huge, massive, pro, successful pro artist, or if you're just a small-time, little, mini-creator hobbyist, yeah? I think you've just gotta realise what's important about it. And, and the career aspect is not the most important part of it. You're a human being making art, and art is a beautiful thing that you need to check your ego at the door. You need to re remember that followers and attention is not the reason why you're making stuff. 
and that you just have to enjoy the process. The meaning of making art is the enjoyment of doing it. There is something inside you that wants to create stuff, you know, you want to draw stuff. And who cares if only 10, 20, 100 people see it? You're making art because you want to make art. I just wish more pros out there sort of acknowledged their privilege, acknowledged the luck involved, um, acknowledged that everyone is trying as hard as they can. And, and, and for the bitter people who just say, oh, you just got lucky, don't, don't be like that. Don't show, don't be defensive. You can tell that to both people. Pros don't be defensive when people say you got lucky. And the people who are bitter about not being successful yet, don't get defensive about the fact that you're not a huge success. <sighs> I think I hit everything. It's It's been a bit of a long video, I apologise. I'm going to try and cut it down. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to learn about Hiroshi Yoshida. I feel like this happens all the time. I try and learn about Hiroshi Yoshida in these videos for you. And what ends up happening is I ramble about Twitter drama. So yeah, he, he, he died in 1950, born in 1876. The cool thing about him is that he traveled the world. Well, that's one aspect that's super cool about his stuff. So normally you see the Japanese woodblock style. It's all like Japanese landscapes and stuff. He went to like Switzerland. He went to India. He went to the Grand Canyon and he made woodblock art of all these places. And that's what's super cool. It's called the Shin Hanger style. And it was like a 20th century version of traditional printing. Whoa, he was in a lineage of eight artists. Kiso Yoshida died in 2005. Well, there you go. I learned something. So a descendant from Hiroshi Yoshida is alive today. And she's ma she makes like wood chip installations. That's pretty cool. Whoa, they're beautiful. I learned something. I didn't just talk about shit from my own head today i learned something and i hope that you did too whoa we're learning stuff we're getting better every day um i hope you're doing all right out there i hope you're surviving it's a strange strange world everything sucks but everything is beautiful keep on keeping on look out for one another and be kind try your best but don't hold your self-worth on your art or your career. <laughs> this has been a Poncho Pilgrim video.